Good morning. Welcome to First Congregational Church. Welcome to everybody. Old people, new people, uh, visitors, everybody. I want to tell you that there are three covenant statements that we have here at First Congregational Church, and I think it's important for everybody to know that about us as early as you possibly can when you get to know this congregation. And one is our commitment to just peace. And two is our dedication to being open and affirming to the LGBTQIA community. And also our deep efforts to be an anti-racist congregation and hopefully help the city and the rest of the world to become more anti-racist. And now I want to talk to the newcomers, the visitors. I met someone just this morning, Danielle, who is a visitor because she's friends with Brian and Jimmy. And then there are some of you that are actually here because you maybe heard about First Congregational Church. They <coughs> are looking for a, um, a spiritual community and um, a, a church that you can become a part of. And so we hope that this is a place that you have found that you will want to return again. And I'm gonna ask you to get in touch with us. The first thing you can do is go on chat. If you don't know how to do chat yet, it's just a little button down at the bottom of your Zoom and you can click on there. We keep that pretty busy during our worship because people are so anxious to connect with each other. But you can just pop in there and say, I'm Danielle and I'm new and I'm here because I'm friends with Jimmy and Bryant or you can say who you are and I'm here because I want to uh, to watch, watch uh, Marsha Moyers be baptized this morning. There's a lot of reasons why new people might be with us so let us know and then check us out on our website at, which is firstcongo.com um, and if you're, if you're actually interested in hearing more and more about what's going on in the life of the church, the announcements, the news, uh, sometimes the sorrows of our community, um, get on our Congo Beat and on the website that, that takes those announcements to you. You can do that through the website. You can do that by letting us know on chat that you want to become a part of that and, and I'll connect with you. And then we're always on Facebook and Instagram. And so, and after church, we hang around for a few minutes. So if you'd like to just kind of see us saying hello to each other, we try to look for our children and um, get to know us as a community the best you can. But please don't get lost in the, in the cyber world because it is hard for us to be together. I'm going to switch over to Muley. Muley has an important announcement. All right. How's everybody doing? Good. Hey, raise your hand if you know that the first and third Wednesdays, I read books and visit with our Congo kids. Now put your hands down because nobody can see them anyway. <laughs> this Wednesday at 7 Central Time, log in and you can read along with me as I read how Stella got her. Stella brings the family. Yeah, it's a great story because just as we know at First Congo, families come in all sorts of ways. And that is a very special thing. Yeah, so this Wednesday at 7 o'clock, be sure to come visit with your host, Steve, and me, and let's talk about each other's families. In a good way, of course. <laughs> See you then. Thanks, Muley. I've got a couple of cool things quickly to tell you. Um, next Sunday, after worship, we... Um, uh, Mike Robertson and Richard Mitchell are doing a really cool thing. Um, they came over to the church about a little over a week ago, and they, they took all of the Global Goods Fair Trade inventory that they could fit in their car, and they drove it home, and they're setting up a Global Goods Fair Trade holiday store to happen next Sunday. And the details are in your Congo bead about the times and about the uh, location, but they're only going to allow 10 people in the house at a time. They want to be sure to keep everybody safe. And of course, masks will need to be worn. They're going to have uh, pickup snacks and things that you, everything's going to be done very safely. If it's a beautiful day, they'll put some of our, uh, of our global goods um, things out on the front lawn. So um, we hope you'll be able to enjoy that day. And we really are appreciative of Mike and Richard for taking care of that. Also, um, this coming Saturday, there's going to be a coat drive. Our 
our uh, maintenance man, Hunter Dempster, is just a really kind person. He's involved in things in our community. And at three o'clock on Saturday, he's going to be in the back parking lot of the church receiving coats. And they're going to be distributed to several different uh, 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 charitable organizations. And so it, I know I have a few right, so coats. You just to and so um, I'm going to meet you, Brian, for just a moment. There we go. Well, I can't. Um, so if you want to bring some coats by for people uh, that could use them this winter, do that at three o'clock on Saturday. We have a wonderful neighborhood also. The Cooper Young neighborhood has been really supportive and happy that we do a food justice ministry and have been doing that for many years. And so every Thanksgiving, there was a woman who lived in this neighborhood. She's died some years ago. Her name was Suzanne Stryker, but she loved this ministry and supported it. And in her memory, they do uh, continue a donation fund in her memory for our food justice program. And how you can participate in that is just send in a donation like you normally would to the church and make sure that you um, name that it is for the food justice program and the you can say the Suzanne Stryker or the Neighborhood Fund. That way they know that you meant for it to be um, signified as part of that fund. It'll all come to the Food Justice Ministry. And if you see one of our first, con I mean, uh, uh, Cooper Young neighbors, just thank them for the, for the nice things they do for our church. And with that, it's good we're here together.
Let us pray. Loving God, we come to you in thanksgiving, knowing that all that we are and all that we have is a gift from you. In faith and love, help us to do your will. We are listening. We offer to you this day all the facets of life, whether it be at home, at work, or at school, to be patient, to be merciful, to be generous, and to share your grace. Give us wisdom and insight to understand your will and the discipline to fulfill good intentions. Amen. Good morning. Today's word is Psalm 71. In you, O Lord, I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me and rescue me. Incline your ear to me and save me. Be to me a rock of refuge, a strong fortress to save me, for you are my rock and my fortress. Rescue me, O oh my God, from the hand of the wicked, from the grasp of the unjust and the cruel. For you, O oh Lord, are my hope, my trust, O oh Lord, from my youth. Upon you I have leaned from my birth, it was you who took me from my mother's womb. My praise is continually of you. I have been like a portent to many, but you are my strong refuge. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all day long. Do not cast me off in the time of old age. Do not forsake me when my strength is spent for my enemies speak concerning me. For those who watch for my life, consult together. They say, pursue and seize that person whom God has forsaken, for there is no one to deliver. O oh God, do not be far from me. O oh my God, make haste to help me. Let my accusers be put to shame and consumed. Let those who seek to hurt me be covered with scorn and disgrace but I will hope continually, and I will praise you yet more and more. My mouth will tell of your righteous acts, of your deeds of salvation all day long, though their number is past my knowledge. I will come praising the mighty deeds of the Lord God. I will praise your righteousness, yours alone. O oh God, from my youth you have taught me, and I still proclaim your wondrous deeds. So even to old age and gray hairs, O oh God, do not forsake me until I proclaim your might to all generations to come. Your power and your righteousness, O oh God, reach the high heavens. You who have done great things, O oh God, who is like you? You who have made me see many troubles and calamities will revive me again. From the depths of the earth, you will bring me up again. You will increase my honor and comfort me once again. I will also praise you with the harp for your faithfulness, O oh my God. I will sing praises to you with the lyre, O oh Holy One of Israel. My lips will shout for joy when I sing praises to you. My soul also, which you have rescued. All day long, my tongue will talk of your righteous help. For those who tried to do me harm, have been put to shame and disgraced. The word of God. Do you know me? Good morning. It's very nice to have children here today with us. I have been worried a little bit this week about advertisements. Here's how it started. I, I heard this story on the news about minks who were getting COVID. And I realized I don't think I've ever seen a mink. So I went to my computer and I logged on and I Googled minks and I clicked on a picture of a mink. But before I could see the minks, I got this advertisement for a new laptop. 
somebody wants me to want a new laptop. But I got past the ad and I saw pictures of the minks, they're very cute, and I clicked on an article about minks so I could learn some things about what they're like. But when I tried to learn about the minks, on the side of my computer, there was an advertisement for boots because somebody wants me to want new boots. I read some more and then I came to another advertisements for sneakers because somebody wants me to want new sneakers. And then I came to a, an advertisement for underwear. Somebody wants me to want new underwear. There were advertisements everywhere. Everything you click on, there's another advertisement. And if you watch TV, you get commercials and they have advertisements. What it is, is there are very rich people who want to get even more rich by making all of us want more and more and more things. It's called materialism. That's your vocabulary word for today. Materialism. Say it, please. Materialism. It means that you want more and more and more things. And if you are materialistic, if you get too materialistic, you start to think that having more things is going to make you happy. That's not true. And you start to think that having more things might make you better or might fix things. It's really not true. In fact, materialism is a threat to your spiritual gifts. So every one of you came into this world with a sense of wonder and curiosity. You came to this world with love and faith and hope and gratitude, and those are spiritual gifts that are your birthright. And if you get too bogged down in materialism, it threatens those spiritual gifts that we really want you to keep strong. So I want you to remember that when you see those advertisements, that's when somebody wants to get very, very rich by making us all, all want a lot of things and be materialistic. And I have an assignment for you for this week. Here's the assignment. Every time you notice yourself wanting something, go ahead and want it for a little while, and then spend the same amount of time that you spend wanting, wondering. I want your wondering and your curiosity to be just as strong as your wanting. I tried it myself, here's how I tried it. I wanted some new socks. I wanted some bright ones with lots of colors and designs in them. And so I wanted the socks, and then I remembered the assignment, and so the same amount of time I spent wanting socks, I decided to use to wonder about something. And since I was already paying attention to my feet, I wondered about my toes. Do you know that I have three bones in every single toe? There's all these bones, and I wonder why all those bones are in my toes, and then I notice bones in, there's so many bones in my feet. All those bones in my feet, what are they there for and how do they work? I started wondering. Wondering is really good for your spirit. It helps you keep your spirit strong. So every time you start wanting, make sure you spend the same time balancing your wanting with wondering. And that way your spirit will stay stronger than materialism. That's your assignment for this week. And if you try it and come to Sunday school next year, next week on Sunday morning, I would really like to hear how it went for you. Have a great week and stay safe, please. And now we're excited to be joining in the baptism of Marcia Moyer. St. Philip writes that in baptism, we know faith is our earth in which we take root, hope as the water through which we are nourished, love as the air through which we grow. 
and truth as the light through which we become fully grown. St. Paul writes that in baptism we know ourselves through the eyes, the compassion, and the grace of God. We know ourselves as beloved, as connected with God, all humanity, and the earth itself. There is no longer Jew nor Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male and female. We are one in Christ Jesus. We read in the Gospels that Jesus, who was baptized by John in the River Jordan, said that all people should turn and accept the God who had already accepted them. And today, we, the members and friends of First Congregational United Church of Christ, proclaim that same message. That the God who has claimed every person as a beloved child speaks today to Marcia as a beloved daughter. This sacrament of baptism is an outward and visible sign of an internal and eternal form of grace which comes from God. And just as the promise of the gospel is not only to us, but also to all of God's children, baptism with water and the Holy Spirit is the mark of Marcia's entrance into this community of faith. Let us pray. Eternal God, we thank you for the gift of creation called forth by your saving wisdom. Before the world had shape and form, your spirit moved over the waters. Out of the waters of the deep, you formed the firmament and brought forth the earth to sustain all life. And so we ask, O oh God, that you pour out your holy presence in this water so that it may nurture, sustain, and watch all who are touched by it and that it might create new life in Marcia, so that she may be alive in you, the one who was and is and shall always be. Amen. Marcia, do you wish to be baptized as a beloved child of God into this community of faith, following in the way of Jesus, the sanctum, say I do. Amen. Marcia, we baptize you in the name of God our Creator, Jesus our brother, and the Holy Spirit is The Holy Spirit is a baby. Continue in the service, you're also joining the church. And so, do I ask you, do you desire to follow after the way of Jesus, joining with these people according to the grace given you and growing in your faith and your understanding of God? If so, please say, I do. Do you promise by the grace of God to resist oppression and evil and to show love and justice? And to witness to God's love for the whole human family as best you are able. If so, please say, I do. Do you desire to participate in the life and mission of this community, sharing regularly in the worship of God, and enlisting in the work of the local church as it serves the community and the world? If so, please say, I do. Let us. The members and friends of First Congregational Church, United Church of Christ, express mm -hmm. our welcome and affirm our mutual ministry together. We, we welcome you with joy into the, the common life of the church. church. We, we promise you our friendship and prayers as we share the hope and labors of the Church of Jesus Christ. By the power of the Holy Spirit, may we continue to grow together. Let us pray. Oh God, we praise you for calling us to faith and for bringing us together. We thank you for sending to us this friend, Mark, so that we may work together in serving the needs of others. We burn in us the power of your servant so that we may live together in your spirit share our lives in faith, and so love each other that we may have among us the same mind which is in Christ Jesus. Amen. And now you are presented with gifts. We have a tea 
circuit. We can you can fit in and adjust, make sure the size is right, and a baptismal certificate and a joining certificate. So Broken down and tired of living life on the merry-go-round, and you can find the fire, but I see it in you, so we can walk down. Ooh, mountains, we gon' walk down. I was stuck in a waiting room a few weeks ago, and there was one of those police shows on the TV blaring where we were taken right into the middle of a domestic violence case, where a woman had stabbed her husband in the arm in the midst of some dispute, claiming self-defense. 
as she sobbed her story. One of the policemen tried to convince her disoriented husband to press charges. The man was not fully dressed. He shrugged. He, on the advisement of the police, said he'd press charges, and the policeman grabbed the woman's arm, saying smugly, you're going to go downtown. She started sobbing. The husband looked confused as his wife was handcuffed and taken away, and it didn't seem to be till she was in the car that it registered with him what was going on. She started screaming, please don't take me to jail. Please don't take me away. And at that moment, I started registering another wretched truth. It was about myself this time. I was passing the time watching two lives and a marriage unravel. It was being shared with me as entertainment of a sort. And I was passively gazing, taking it in. Jesus said in the Gospel of Matthew, the eye is the lamp of the body. If your eye is sound, your whole body will be full of life. But if your eye is not sound, your whole body will be full of darkness. If the light in you is darkness, how great is the darkness? And I realized I needed to get my eyes off that TV, which was a source of voyeuristic darkness and in its own way, a celebration of pain. You know, years before Jesus offered his famous quote, Plato made a similar observation. He accused his eyes of dragging his spirit into circumstances it ought not to be in. He told of a time when a man named Leontius was walking outside a wall where an executioner had been doing his work. And Leontius saw these corpses lying on the floor at his feet. It was horrible, of course. But Leontius was in some strange way curious. Something in Julie, I think the sanctuary got booted out altogether, and that's why you're now on the screen. Thanks, Lillian. I'm going to see if Tony can pick it up. Thank you for your patience, friends. We are working these technical difficulties out for some reason. Our camera is no longer working, so we're just gonna. Like this? Like this. Okay. That looks fine. All right, why don't you try speaking? Shirley? Are we back? We are back. Raise your hand if we are. Okay, and now this is gonna be a memory test. Can you yell back what my last line was? <laughs> <laughs> oh my. Um. No, nope. it was about curiosity. Are we okay? It was about curiosity. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> it, was, it was the follow up thing. Oh, in the I got it. I, I'm going to just start and we'll be fine. So, Plato tells this story, and, and it's something that we can all relate to because the urge to stare at what's horrible this rubbernecking that occurs when there's been an accident, TV 
TV offers a million opportunities to cast our eyes upon what is negative, soul-stealing, even obscene. Or worse, it, it fosters in us a sense of callous indifference. We register misery as a daily diet, often hardening ourselves to Political move to restrict their intake of what is frightening or anxiety laden. You know, there's a discipline in the faith filled life to being thoughtful and wise about how we care for ourselves, paying attention to what we're paying attention to, shutting off, shutting down, turning away from images and stories and news that, that doesn't enhance our sense of love or compassion or trust or, or even our energy. That's a wise behavior, but it can be a challenge. The TV is always there. And when we're tired, it's the easy escape, the easy time absorber, but it often doesn't renew. And in fact, just the opposite. Our scripture reading this morning is Psalm 71. And it gives quite a beautiful biblical model of living in difficult times attentively but in a way that helps us stay both healthy and actually helps us grow. The author of this psalm isn't named, but most people think it was King David. And to get the sense of the context here, the psalm was written most probably when one of David's sons, Adonijah, was trying to usurp his throne. David had promised the title to his other son, Solomon. So brother was fighting against brother, and the father was stuck right in the middle. It's not the fight anybody would want. David is in his later years, towards the end of his life. He's brought Israel to a peak of power and stability. And in the midst of building this dynasty, he's already survived one miserable insurrection by his other son, Absalom. So here we go again with a nightmare, a father against son and son against son. David writes, deliver me, O God, out of the hand of the wicked, out of the hand of the unrighteous and cruel man. David had encountered and survived dangerous enemies throughout his life, but how miserable it was, especially in this case, that they were his own sons. You know, the word translated from the Hebrew as cruel in this psalm comes from the same Hebrew word that is sometimes translated as leaven. And it's a fabulous image. David is facing an enemy that's not only wicked, but is spreading trouble everywhere it goes, just like leaven spreads outwards in the rising of bread dough. This man's influence was permeating the layers around David's life like a contagion. Everyone he was in contact with was, was becoming amplified and, and infected by, by this anxiety. But the sense of wrong and worry even grows. David is especially aware of his age and the vulnerability that that brings. He doesn't have the same energy he might have had in other years for this fight. In verse 9, he writes, Do not cast me off in the time of old age. Do not forsake me when my strength fails. Age can feel like an enemy sometimes. When we feel like we know the most, have the most to offer, our, our joints get in the way. Hips, knees, hearts, arteries, discs, parts of our body we never thought much about suddenly start speaking and impeding our path. Memory feels fragile. Words like cancer, heart attack, cholesterol, words that other people used to have to pay attention to now become words that shape our experience. And see, this is woven into David's sense of being at risk, in trouble, his sense that he has no, no safe place in the world, no peace, even his body is failing him. But as the psalm moves on, David shares some unexpected wisdom. Your righteousness, O God, he writes, is very high. You who have done great things, O God, who is like you? You have, who have shown me great and severe troubles. 
Let me repeat that. You have done great things, O God, you who have shown me great and severe troubles. David is now calling his troubles great things, a gift. And that's a big turnaround in this, in this psalm. But anyone who has raised children, anybody who has mentored or taught other people can, can relate to this message because there are some things that you can't learn through a lecture or an article or even well-intentioned advice. You have to learn them through your own skin needs and burned fingers and broken heart and failed attempts. We might wish we could spare the people we love this kind of learning, but, but we can't. And sometimes hard times bring the best lessons and actually help us cultivate wisdom and perspective. You know, a lot of us live under the illusion of invulnerability. That is, until something bursts the bubble. We're just going to do life right and live by the rules. And then suddenly the rules aren't working anymore. We often see people trying to control what they can't. Look at this crazy fight about wearing face masks in our country. People want to believe somehow COVID-19 can't get them if they just act like it's not there, despite all evidence to the contrary. People want to believe that if they get sick with COVID-19, it won't be like it is for other people, that they'll be the conquering heroes, not, not succumbing victims. Well, maybe true. We hope so, but maybe not. And in any case, no reason for bravado or arrogance. None of us is invulnerable. We don't have control over a whole lot that happens in life. Hard lessons come uninvited to us all. And David was smack in the face of that reality, unable to control the behavior of his sons, out of control of his own legacy, out of control of his own body even. People were watching and talking as his life and leadership is, is moving totally into a risk zone. And yet he says, I have become as a wonder to many, but you, O oh God, are my refuge. People could see him as either a saint or a sinner, powerful or weak, vulnerable or strong, but God knew the truth, maybe more than David himself. And in this statement, David names God as a benevolent God, as a shelter, as a refuge. He names truth as a friend, despite the ups and downs of public opinion or private circumstance or feeling. This is a psalm of great praise to God and also great complaining. David's vulnerable, his family's dysfunctional to the degree that his own son is trying to kill him, and yet, and yet he remembers the power and goodness of God. Rather than becoming numb to this pain, rather than ignore it, he, he casts himself to a source of life. He acknowledges God's power and especially God's goodness. And he names it several times right next to naming his own pain. He remembers God's faithfulness. In the last verses of this psalm, he speaks of God's rescue, God's presence, God's constancy. He draws on the wisdom of an entire lifetime and reminds himself that while we human beings often think in seasons and very immediate chapters, God has a wisdom that is beyond what we can know or comprehend, an eternal vision that we can trust in. So what? <laughs> These are challenging times for all of us in varying degrees. Health experts have just named that the country is out of control with COVID-19, just as we're looking forward to the holiday season. Many of us will have to change traditions and plans for family gatherings. Some of us will be really isolated at a time we typically associate as being a time for celebration with the people we love most. Whatever stimulus help we looked for didn't seem to be coming, at least quickly. Rent payments, though, are still due, and we still need to eat. It's stressful, and yet there is wisdom to guide us. David was in a crisis, and yet able to anchor himself in realities beyond the anxiety, realities of the power of love 
the presence of a God who never abandons us, even in a pandemic. David kept his vision and memory on things that strengthened him, memories, experiences that empowered him, even as he acknowledged his struggles. There's a discipline, isn't there, in controlling our outlook. One of the seasons, we, one of the things we remember in this season of giving is that we often find our strength as we give to others. Studies show over and over again that giving and showing generosity in a sustained way builds our own sense of abundance. When we give, we realize, first of all, how much we have, but also that we have more, oftentimes, rather than less. When we support the church, which serves for us as a source of wisdom and community and support and life, we are strengthening our own life resources, our own powers of renewal. Let's take David's wisdom to heart now. Let's fill our lives with the light of faith and a kind of determined conscientiousness about focusing on the gifts of faith and the gift of the faith community. Even as we are struggling, we have access to beauty, strength, joy, Let's do the things that bring this closer to us. Let's read and remember and write and walk. Find the music that uplifts, the paintings that inspire, the conversations that guide, friends that renew. Let's give to remember that we have gifts that are not only enough for us, but also that we can sustain others. And let's claim this time for the gift it offers rather than getting overwhelmed by crisis that we can't control. Take even small steps towards mental health and spiritual joy, even for a few minutes each day. Remember all those times when you got through, when all seemed lost, and yet it wasn't lost, when there was pain and also blessing to be had through the pain. Think of the plant that almost died, but suddenly it grew a new stalk and it blossomed yet again. Think of the blessing that the passing of death brought to someone whose life was in a lot of physical misery. Think of friends who have been loyal. As David reminds us to do in Psalm 71, do these things not as idle activities, ways to pass the time, but as true survival strategies. As he put it, hope continually, tell of righteous acts, remember deeds of salvation, proclaim and experience wonder, and remember that God is a good God and that God is in control always, and as he puts it, even beyond our understanding. Be disciplined about nurturing an environment of life for yourself, for your family, for this church. This isn't the season we expected. But it's the season we've got, and God is still God, and you are still loved, and your church is still here. Rejoice. Amen. We now worship God by presenting our offerings, and I want to remind you that next week we'll be receiving our pledges on behalf of the 2021 year. Um, I am issuing a challenge that in the loss of our hostel income, it would really, really help if we could increase. So Mark and I are offering a, a challenge of saying, do a COVID-19 stretch and increase, I guess you could increase your pledge by 19%, but you could also try to increase it by 25. So just stretch that, that pledge as much as you can because we really need your support at this time. Amen. I won't just survive, oh, you will see me thrive, can't write my story, I'm beyond the arc of time, I won't just conform, no matter how you shake my core, cause my roots they Have so little faith. Don't doubt it, don't doubt it. Oh, victory is in my veins. I know it, I know and it. And I will not negotiate. I'll fight it, I'll fight it.
My name is Kevin Norman. In 2003, uh, to say I was adrift in the universe uh, would be an understatement. I feel that First Congo found me when there was carpet in the sanctuary and we worshiped in the basement. I was greeted at the door by Jackie Nairn. I'll never forget that. She, she saw me right away. She saw, I think, my brokenness, the fact that I was lost. And uh, within 10 minutes of our meeting, she, uh, well, she connected with me. Within 10 minutes, I was on the gardening committee. <laughs> and of course, found out later that involved mostly pulling weeds, but uh, that was fine. My, my early experiences at Congo uh, was like none I'd had before. At first Congo, I felt seen, I felt heard, I felt valued. I think in many ways for the first time in my life. Looking back, I realized I was feeling love, a concept that I also think was somewhat foreign to me at the time. I was beginning a process of transformational healing. 
First Congo became a major player in that process. The church allowed me, gifted me to come home to the fact that I'm too spirited, both a man and a woman, and uh, that this was not a curse, but actually a beautiful blessing. In some very tangible ways, um, I, I feel like my life began at that point. I left Memphis in 2007 uh, as part of that healing process and moved to Santa Fe, New Mexico, where I live now. I've always tried to stay connected to First Congo over the years, but my relationship with First Congo changed dramatically with COVID-19. It put us squarely back together in, in a very amazing way, and, and I dove in. I, I think that these few months ago, I realized how hungry I was, I still was, for this bread and, and water that First Congo had given me so many years ago. That, that overwhelming feeling of uh, being in the process of love. First Congo is a master, a bastion, both a laser and a floodlight of love. It emanates from the tiny spot there at 1000 South Cooper in Memphis. It spreads its love like a blanket, I think, of sacred compassion born of deep commitment. In my opinion, healing and blessing all the people of the world. It is a special place, a unique place, uh, not just locally, but nationally and globally. This is my belief a leader, a beacon of hope and, and love. I recently offered to First Congo my largest monetary contribution to date. Um, in these, these trying times, I, I struggle to find opportunities to um, get my feet wet, get my hands dirty in the healing work of, of spreading love. I hope we can all work together to keep this warrior, this, this champion of love, strong and secure. In these most challenging times, First Congo needs our help so that we as a community uh, can continue this amazing work of love. I'm grateful to be part of First Congo. Thank you. so much, Kevin, for that heartfelt message. Um, one of the things that we have experienced during COVID-19 is an opportunity to welcome Kevin back home. So we see him quite often, and I appreciate your sentiments of affection, which we all feel. Thank you, Pastor Cheryl, for that wonderful message, of reminding us to just look at the things around us that are there to see that in the spite of the darkness, we can still be community. So as we look now to our screens or your phones for the affirmation of community, let us begin to remember and recite together that we are community. We will be together. We will stand as brothers and sisters given life by one God. We will be together. We will watch out for one another. We will listen to what needs to be said in a spirit of compassion. We will respect the power of silence. We will wait for the slowest. We will sooner or later catch up with the fastest. We will dry the tears of those who are weeping and know that they will dry ours when the time comes. We will let ourselves begin to feel at least a little of the pain of those we have considered our enemies. We will entrust our stories to each other. We will not be skeptical that peace can come. We will not forget the joy of life. We will not forget to be grateful. We will do our best to stir in each other hope, courage, and faith. Will you pray with me this morning? God of our conceptual beginning and beyond, eternity. We praise you endlessly for who you have been, who you are, and will be for each one of us. 
we feel you beckoning us to deepen our relationships with you and our siblings. We are living in opposition with infused feelings of dehumanization and intense hatefulness toward one another. We allow race, gender, religion, class, ethnicity, sexual orientation, and any other of our differences, including zip code, to feed those flames of the fires in our hearts. Take us back to your eternal truth from which we have wandered or never known. Love is our pre-existing condition. All the rest has been rated and ranked by humanity. From the depths of our unknown, you walked us through childhood into youth and along our adulthood path. Our victories over darkness and death have been noted by onlookers and bystanders. Often participants in erecting the crippling barriers, they stand ready to pounce on us with the hint of your absence. Some of us long to be a living testimony about the many dangers, toils, and snares, troubles, and calamities through which you have protected and safely delivered us to the other side of them. But God, fear chokes our words. Embarrassment outruns our prayer. Even we who are the, at least in our worlds, the go-to people for our discerning wisdom, even we are calling on you to soothe and to bring strength for ourselves, our nation, our world, as a refuge from the storms that nearly take us over. You are the wonderful counselor, Prince of Peace. These parts of your name provide so much hope for the ways that you are wonderful in all of life. Everything about us that is capable of praising you, praises you. And in this pandemic of inconvenience, we, in your house of praise, have discovered new ways to praise you. With delight, well, of course, after resistance, we discovered new things for which to praise you. Hallelujah, amen, and amen. In our immediate community, we give thanks for all the blessings you have lavishly poured into our personal pools of Bethesda. Give us the childlike will and wonder to jump into our pool with abandon to receive the new life that you provide. We thank you for Marsha Moyer's will, wonder, and readiness to dive into her pool to serve you and First Gotha. We give thanks for all members and friends who are praying and pondering about their monetary gifts to you through the ministries of First Gotha. We give thanks for those who are doing that, knowing that in the fullness of time, they will. We give thanks for all the time, creative thinking, and sacrificial giving being poured into our vision and transformation of this property that we call the First Congo Campus. May they please you and serve this community according to plans that you have for us. Fortify our ability to read your plans like architects of the spirit. We continue to pray for families with children as they struggle, struggle to ensure safe homes, safe schools, safe recreation, and holiday celebrations in non-traditional ways. Grant them peace. Help all of us, their community of faith, scattered, not gathered, help us teach the children and you how to receive and pass peace in a time of unrest. 
we continue to give thanks for hope. Signaled by the new light being added to our families, our love circles, we anticipate the arrival of the Oliver baby due on Christmas Day. What a Christmas blessing for Jane and Mario and Virginia May and all of us. And now in our personal silence, we say thank you. Thank you with a smile, a smile of gratitude, a deep breath, and a letting go of whatever is making us tense, or as we say, God, what's stressing us out. And now, God, we leave all spoken and unspoken prayer needs with you. We begin anew with childlike will and wonder. Amen, amen, and amen. Let us together join in the covenant prayer. We covenant with the Lord and one with another and do bind ourselves in the presence of God to walk together in all his ways according as he is pleased to reveal himself unto us in his blessed word of truth. 
go forth, beloved. Do your best to do your best. One day at a time. And some days it's one hour at a time. But do your best to do your best. The blessing of God, our creator, Jesus, our brother, and the Holy Spirit, our strength, be with us and abide with us always. Amen. Our closing hymn is Here I Am, Lord. Hi. Hi. Hey, everybody. Hey. All right.
We got to Good morning, out. Mom. Good morning, Toby and Oliver. <laughs> Hello. Hey, boys. Hi. Hi, May. The needy girl. Hi, May. Hi, everybody. So good to see you all. Good morning and greetings from Long Island. Where is hey, Brian? Yeah. How's the tea up there? <laughs> oh, well, not for us. But... Ron, do you see our new background I use in all my meetings? <laughs> look at that. Let's see. What's that like? Look at you. You look like you're in the sanctuary. Yeah. Oh, perfect. <laughs> Magical screen. Must be cold outside. You're like Proud Boys, they're they're purple and gold. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there he is. I wanted to thank you, Seven. What a beautiful was great. Proud of my brother. I'm so proud Kevin. of my brother. <laughs> Keep her brothers. Keep them, Kevin. This is Kevin. I don't know. Thank you. Forgot. I love those earrings, Kevin. This is Dave. Kevin. Kevin. Yeah. We're uh, on Mike's own. So. Oh, Kevin, that was beautiful. We seen in a while. Let's see. Hi, Gretchen. Hi, guys. Hi, guys. Hey, it's so good to see you guys. Hey, Brian, I was looking for a usher to, to get me to a seat during that reading. That was so beautiful. I thought I was in the Orpheum or something, man. That was oh, <laughs> you're so sweet. Thank you. That was well read. Thank you. That's lovely. Thank, thank you, Kevin, for your reading. It was beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. You guys always. You're so cute. <laughs> yeah, we do the matchy matchy. <laughs> Here's our Lindsay. Lindsay. Here's Philly. Hey, thank you, Dennis from Philly. Dennis. Hello, everyone. Good job. <laughs> The oh, songs God. all brought me to tears. They were so beautiful. It was oh, off camera. Oh, time. oh my gosh. Me too. Me too. The voices and the people were so beautiful. Hey. Hi, Judy. Hey. 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 How are you? Hello. Hey, Judy. Judy. Hey. Hi, David. Hey, Dave. Hey, Dave. Hey, Dave. They were there. Two. Oh, there. Oh, dear. <laughs> Hi, David. Hi, Hi. Hey, Dave and Judy. Good to see hey, you. Kevin. Hey, Kevin. David and Judy. Oh, look. Here's some people hey, from Florida. Let me go. Hi, Andrew from Florida. Andrew. Yay. Hey. Hi, uh, I, I want to introduce. I want to introduce the newest member of the Congo family. Oh, 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 yeah. oh. <laughs> she arrived on Friday. Oh my gosh. Yeah. She's a little busy right now, but I would I would bring her to the camera. <laughs> <laughs> and, and what is and what is her name? Zaley Makina Yoder. Oh Daily? Zaley. Beautiful. How beautiful. Yeah. Oh yeah, she's doing Zaley. she's doing very well. Good. And how's her mom? Mom's also doing very well. Good. Yeah. Uh, Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Send photos for the Congo lead so I can. Oh yes, yes we will. Yes we will. Oh, that's lovely. Yeah. So we we actually hope to come home from the hospital today. So nice. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Is that where you're at now? Is the hospital? That's yeah. We're in the hospital. Yeah. Okay, good. Because I thought the decorations at your house was looking really weird. 
<laughs> little bit into the wall clock. We have our yeah. whiteboard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. I didn't realize Jane was pregnant. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's great. They're having a boy. Ah, okay. So we got an, another baby. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. Y'all keep on. We're going to have the kids' ministries busy before long. You right. betcha. I swear. <laughs> oh. I, I thought they were already were pretty busy. <laughs> yeah, actually. <laughs> Busier. <laughs> Give Omi hugs. Yeah. Sure. Bye, everyone. Bye, sir. Bye, Bye Dennis. Bye, Dennis. Thanks, Bye. Dennis. Thank you. Thank you. Do, Kevin. Mm -hmm. Bye. Uh, I'm watching Marsha's mysterious chair. Can you guys see this? Marsha's chair keeps moving on its own. <laughs> <laughs> I like your birds on your chair, Marsha. <laughs> I saw I saw those two, Marsha. They're beautiful. Susan Adams gave this to me. Oh, really beautiful. It's pretty. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your message, Miss Marsha. That was very pretty today. Very nice and a good reminder. Oh, wow. I actually get as much from your sermons as I do from Cheryl's. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> no. um, yeah, but we're moving into uh, the time of materialism for our season. We, we, we uh, follow the season of giving with the season of Massive materialism that I am constantly trying to figure out. Good looks, Rose. Thank you. 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 Yeah, it's gone. Cool. Oh, Let's just go say hello to Ingrid. Hi, hey, Ingrid. Hi, Hi Ingrid. Hi, Ingrid. Hey. Oh, hello. Hi. Did you just wake up from a nap? No, they they went somewhere. I don't know where they went with Sabrina. So she probably just got sleepy in the car on the ride home. We went to the Tinnick Garden. Oh, there they went to the is. Botanic Garden. Wow. Oh, nice. That's so pretty. That's cool. <laughs> Good to see you, beautiful ladies. Mm -hmm. Okay, all my loved ones. I'll see you later. Bye. Bye. See you, Kevin. Bye, Bye everybody. Bye. Bye. Tony, thanks for being a lifesaver today. When one yeah. day went out, yes, indeed. The next it's year, Mark. Hey, Kevin. That's hey, Kevin. Kevin. Hey, you guys. Hey, hey you guys. Yeah. Hi, guys. Hey. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Great to see everybody. I love this mask. It's beautiful. Tony, I've noticed one difference between you and me. You have a broad fa face and a flat nose, and your mask always falls down. I have a narrow face and a sticking out nose, and my mask always goes up into my eyes. <laughs> uh, I wish I had that problem, Betsy. <laughs> I wish we could average it out, and then maybe the mask would just stay in the right place. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah. Do what I do. Use hot glue. <laughs> was that Muley or Kevin? <laughs> that was Kevin. Oh my Betsy, I want you to do a study on that. That would actually be very interesting. Which <laughs> mask could certain facial uh, uh, shapes wear more? I tell, I tell you what, I, that mask gets up in my eyes. I hate it. <laughs> yeah. And if you wear glasses, it always happens. <laughs> oh. Good to see you. Well, I no longer have to do that, so that's a blessing. <laughs> Good to see you guys. Nice to see everybody, too. I know. Oh, and by the way, I want to let you know I am not pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot of scuttlebutt. <laughs> oh, let's go see how Chuck is feeling. Hang on. Yeah. How you feeling, Chuck? I just told a big fella. Hey, Chuck. Hey, Chuck. How's the shoulder? 
He's muted. You I got can't you're muted. Can't hear you. See if I can't cool. hear you. There you go, Chuck. I unmuted you. Yeah. Yay. There we go. There we go. Doing, doing pretty good. Doing pretty yeah. good. Good. My physical therapist says I'm ahead of the curve. Yay. I'm, I'm going to see the doctor this week, and I'm hoping he'll give me approval to have the other shoulder done this oh, wow. year. Oh, wow. Before the year's out. So if, if that's possible, then I'll probably be having my second surgery right around Christmas. Um, so. It'll go back you... with that good beard you got coming on. It'll be great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> have you got what you need? Yeah, yeah it's okay. 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 Okay, good. Did you get a phone? You start crazy sometimes. But. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're all there. We're all start crazy. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good time to get surgeries because you can't go out anyway. That's right. <laughs> all right, everybody. Unless somebody has another message to throw out there, I'm going to end our session. Beautiful Sunday. Yeah, yes, it, it is. Time. Bye. Love to everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody.